Garrett trudged through the chilling rain and sopping mud. He had no idea where he was, how far he had strayed from the city walls. The night around him, coupled with the violent storm, made visibility extremely limited. He stepped with great care to avoid tripping over the tree roots and boulders, which he knew were plentiful in the pagan wood. He held his hood tighter around his neck, in a desperate attempt to blot out the blinding rain that was streaming down his sweltering face. At last, in the distance he could barely make out the dying flames of the city torchlights. The thief continued forward, nearly stumbling over a fallen log. At long last, he could finally see the gates of the city come into view. Garrett ran to the gate. But his leather boots slipped against the sopping mud, causing him to fall headfirst against the barricade. Blood mixed with the rain and sweat on his desperate face, as he barred his fist down against the door, desperately attempting to climb the slippery walls of the heavy gate. A wave of uneasiness coursed through his veins, as the muffled sound of laughter emitted from the other side. So, are you proud of what you have done? There was a dark questioning in the unseen one's words, and Garrett still had no idea whom he was speaking to. The storm muffled most of the tone, and what little remained was monotone and genderless. It was like talking to a ghost, or even an animal which had become possessed with speech. It sounded like no one that he had ever known. The laughter subsided, and the large wooden gate slowly opened for him. As he entered, a flash of white light engulfed him, stinging his unsuspecting eyes. Garrett winced, and squeezed his burning eyes tightly closed. When his bicolored irises reopened, he shook his head in confusion. He was back within the pagan wood, laying under a weeping willow tree. The thief wasn't sure how he had gotten there, or what had become of the terrible storm, but one thing was obvious to him. The forest, was. So alive. Color and light danced across the surface of the vast meadow, and the soft breeze carried with it an air of excitement. The scent of lavender and lily were filling his head with whimsy, while the sight of small creatures and songbirds brought him relaxation. Garrett propped himself into a sitting position, leaning against the bark of the willow for support. As if the day had been waning on for hours, the last of the crimson sun disappeared between the folds of the leaves overhead, catching the first reflections of the impending twilight. The thief held his breath in pure awe, as the magnificent shades of pinks and vibrant golds lit up the western sky. Through the surrounding greenery, a small sound began to emerge. It started in a low barely audible whisper, but soon Garrett found himself holding his hands to his ears at the shrill shrieks emitting from the very depths of the foliage. I will ask you again. Are you proud, Garrett, of what you have done, of what you have slandered in order to preserve your legacy, your happiness? To his horror, a demonic green creature flew from seemingly out of nowhere. Its body collided with his, forcing the thief to his knees. Through hazy vision, Garrett stared up at the entity before him. A tall woman, her bark like flesh of verdant green. She had long, ink-black hair, and wore a malicious grin upon her lips. Victoria? He gawked. The wood nymph didn't bother to answer him. Instead, she extended her left hand to his face, 
and gripped his cheek tightly. Garrett winced as sharp, thorny nails embedded into his flesh, her thumb going the deepest. Barely missing his left eye. The thief struggled to pull his face free from the confines of the brutal embrace. I ought to take the other one too. After what you've done. She growled, her high-pitched screech piercing his eardrums. Garrett managed to slip free of her vice-like grip, and turned around to exit the forbidden forest. But no adventure, nor dangerous job, could ever have hoped to prepare him for what he saw next. The once calm forest, was now riddled with corpses. Withered, polluted leaves slowly descended into a stagnant stream careening with toxic black water. As the waters came into contact with the Virgin River Bank, its disease spread, forever tainting the forest in poisonous death. Garrett gaped in disbelief at the supernatural change of scenery. It was making his head spin. What the hell is going on? He turned around and screamed. Victoria was now being consumed by a green flame. Her face was strangely calm as the blaze ate away at her flesh. The hellish fires sizzled into the earth, and the nymph's empty face and pale flesh caused the thief to back away again. Placing his palm against the smooth bark of the willow tree. I warned you. Victoria spoke in a raspy and unforgiving voice. Man fool. We all try to warn you. Warn me? Of what? Garrett demanded. The nymph laughed. Not to take her. Not to taint her. As he listened, Garrett touched his face where her claws had pierced his flesh. He brought his hand to his face at the texture of a warm liquid. His blood was dark and thick. Cursed. He was now trembling uncontrollably. Victoria, I have done no such thing to Guinevere. I've helped her like I tried to help you. The woodsy lady burst out cackling. <laughs> like you helped me? So, I understand now. You want her to die too. No. I never... Know this, Master Thief. The future that awaits her shall make my fate pale in comparison. Guinevere shall suffer like no mortal has ever suffered before. Or shall ever suffer, again. Garrett's eyes narrowed. What are you talking about? Victoria? Victoria! His voice bellowing above the thunder and wild laughter of the ivy-covered nymph. Garrett shot up in his bed, sweat dripping from his frantic face. Guinevere had not been awakened, thankfully. Some rogue you are, Guinevere. You've always been such a heavy sleeper. He murmured aloud. He traced his cheek, feeling to make sure that Victoria's attack had not left a mark. But to his horror, it had. The thief sprung from his bed and rushed up the stairway. No. That's impossible. He grumbled, grabbing up his dagger. Using it as a makeshift mirror, Garrett examined his face. There was a tiny, round scar, now donning his left cheek, just below his eye. How is this possible? He asked, tracing the contours of his face. But his befuddlement and anxiety would both have to wait. For now. A gentle flapping of clumsy wings caused the thief to stand. Garrett walked warily to the clock tower window. If it was Genevieve, what would Basso possibly want at this hour? But sure enough, it was. 
Genevieve. His voice shook slightly at the sight of the flailing magpie. She was covered in blood, mostly around the proud, shiny feathers on her chest. Garrett gingerly took the bird up in his hands, feeling as her last breath left her body. His eyes instantly sought out Pilfer, who was lying at the far corner of the second floor. His green eyes aglow. Damned cat! He growled. Laying Genevieve's lifeless body down respectfully atop his desk, the thief stormed towards the unsuspecting kitten. What have you done? Pilfer got up, and hissed at the shady human who had dared to scold him. Garrett, stop. Guinevere's soft voice rang from behind. Garrett whirled around, completely surprised that his apprentice had managed to approach him without notice. Guinevere? When did you get up? That doesn't matter, Garrett. We need to go. Now! What? Why? Basso might be in real trouble. Basso? The thief rushed towards her. What do you mean he might be in trouble? Pilfer didn't do this. Look! The young woman pointed to the deep gash on the boxman's pet. Garrett examined the injury closely. It didn't take him very long to recognize it. An arrow wound. Someone must have shot her mid-air. Perhaps to prevent her from successfully delivering a message to you. Garrett's expression paled. It was true. Barso only sent the magpie to his clock tower when he needed to relay something. The thief's posture stiffened. Turning to his apprentice, he clasped her wrists tightly with passion. Guinevere, I have to go. Basso's in danger. I'm coming with you. Garrett pressed a finger to her trembling lips. No. No, you're not. Garrett! Listen to me, Guinevere. You need to listen for once. I... He hesitated, not sure if he wanted to divulge another piece of his soul to her so soon. Look, there's something that I never told you. What is it? Guinevere, I haven't been with that many women over my life. Most of the women I've slept with meant absolutely nothing to me. It was nothing but mutual, mindless sex. I've only ever allowed myself to fall in love once before. The reason being that I didn't want to endanger the people I care about most. You've undoubtedly noticed how I treat Basso. I might not like to admit it at times, but the old bloke's like a brother to me. I've saved his ass more times than I can remember, at great risk to my own. I learned a very long time ago that having a gracious and loyal heart can be a huge weakness in my line of work. There are some rotten taffers out there, like Helena, that will try to gain leverage over you through your loved ones. Any time that a mate of mine got arrested, I was always the one to break them out. When they needed a favor, I was there. I may not always act like a Guinevere, but I'm not made of stone. I know this. You know it too, and unfortunately, so do most of my enemies. That is why I deign from engaging in matters of the heart. He explained. Guinevere was as silent as the stars overhead, earnestly hanging on his every word. The thief cupped her cheek in his palm, and stroked her delicate flesh with his rough thumb. His face was a palette of mixed emotions. Guinevere, try to understand. If I were to take you along and something happened to you out there... He pleaded. Guinevere's eyes shimmered like diamonds. Without a moment's thought, she embraced her thief and felt his kisses consume her. I understand. You just better be alright. She smiled, trying to conceal her worry. The thief withdrew, and gently put both hands over her shoulders. His magnificent eyes fell into a sea of emerald, and golden swirls. So long as you are here, 
waiting for me. I shall. With that final sentiment, Garrett threw his cloak over his shoulders and prepared to descend from the clock tower.